Uh, welcome everybody to the uh, sort of first ever uh, WTQA Qigong practice uh, Q&A session. And uh, just to introduce myself, my name is uh, Sam Au. I'm one of the committee members and secretary of WTQA. Uh, and then my co-host today would be Mark. Mark Hi. Host. Yes, I'm my host, Mark. That's me. Hello. And um, guys, one of the things that we just want to cover before we start is we just want to give an acknowledgement to the First Nation people um, in the spirit of reconciliation. Uh, the Wushu, Tai Chi and Qigong Australia um, acknowledges the, tr the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to the land, sea and community. And we pay our respect to their elders past and present. And we extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders peoples today. Uh, we also want to point out that the opinions expressed uh, in this meeting do not actually represent the WTQA, um, do not represent the beliefs of the WTQA. Everybody has their own opinion. And we just want to say too that there's a warning on the use of information that individuals' situations differ from each person and that each person that's at this meeting should seek their own advice from their fitness instructors or their med medical professionals uh, before they take any of this information on. And you can see that on the screen at the moment. So if you need to see that in any more detail, um, we can send it to you later on. Um, but yeah, just a bit of a disclaimer. If we're talking about anything to do with healing, sickness or anything like that, make sure that you do your own research and make sure that it's suitable for you before you take it on board. I just want to like say that we're very lucky to, to be able to get the, uh, that, uh, the masters uh, to join us today. I'll just, uh, today, unfortunately, Master uh, Su Ru uh, is not able to join us uh, at today's uh, session. So, uh, but I've done a recording of her uh, at, in discussing just the Qigong uh, issue. Uh, so I'll play that uh, later on. Uh, so, but we really uh, honored to have all the, the master with us today. Uh, I'd like to just introduce Master uh, Encho Ko of uh, Celestial Tai Chi College. Uh, master Ko is a qualified international Tai Chi and Wushu judge. Uh, President of the National Martial Arts Game Committee, Australia, NMGC. Uh, and uh, Master Ko is an executive member of the International Martial Arts Game Committee, a committee member of the Victorian Chinese Chamber of Commerce and a Justice of Peace. Welcome, very, uh, welcome to Master Ko. Hi, thank you. Welcome, thank Master. You. Um, I'd just like to say welcome too to uh, Master Terry Lim. Um, I don't have the details in quite as detail as what Sam was able to just read for Master Core, but from what I can tell you about Master Terry Lim, um, I'm sure you all, all guys are aware of who Master Lim is. And um, uh, Terry, Master Terry Lim has been around since I started training when I was a young boy. So uh, he's been in this game for a long while and his advice and his answers to these questions uh, will be treasured. So thank you, Master Lim. Hello. Yeah, thank you, Mark. And uh, Master Liu Ming, of course, many of you uh, 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 know, uh, is of the uh, Ji Ruinmen Kung Fu Academy. Uh, Master Liu is the fifth generation inheritor of the Liu He Ji Ruinmen lineage. He is the founder of the Wushu Tai Chi Qigong Australia at WTQA. And after graduating, Graduating from Beijing University of Physical Education, Master Liu accepted teaching post as at the Fujian Institute of Physical Education. Master Liu has students in many countries and considered Qigong one of the most important principles, uh, dis disciplines that we should focus on. Uh, welcome to Master Liu Ming. Thank you very much. And um, as Sam pointed out before, Thank you. Um, Master Su Ru won't be able to make it today. Um, unfortunately, uh, her advice would have also been treasured in this, uh, in this forum. Um, and just to do with the differences between the Chinese language and the uh, English language, um, we will refer to Master Terry Lim um, 
just as Master Terry or Master Lim, uh, if that's okay with everybody else. Um, and we would also, from here, we would like to ask Master Tang to actually open the Q and A event and get this underway. That's all right. Thanks, thanks uh, for the um, Sam and the Mark to uh, organize today. So they uh, community uh, committee actually is uh, uh, agree with uh, how many um, last year I think uh, this year, and um, they started working on the uh, qigong work uh, group and um, get the people together to uh, sharing the knowledge and talk about the point of will. And um, so this, they organize is um, very, you know, very uh, suitable for meantime in the, in the Zoom, meet uh, more, uh, you know, the, the, the master from the seventies, right? In Australia, in Melbourne, and, um, and, and uh, also the people, uh, you know, even Liu Deming, uh, you know, started the, started the, uh, the association. So good, uh, so they all come to the, uh, come to the Zoom to meet uh, people and talk to people. And uh, also everyone come up to sharing with the uh, uh, point of will to about the Qigong. I hope they, um, they you know, the, um, some point of will or most, you know, can be benefit for our association. And, um, but, uh, male, you know, um, can be benefit for everybody, you know, it's good, uh, good to put up that. This couple of years, not been easy for everyone, you know, how uh, we, we still have a patience to stay to um, do this arts, teaching this arts, you know, and uh, training with the arts. I think that they all, we all, we all could uh, have the patience. And uh, we hope everyone can continue. We can continue, keep going. And that's all. Thank you for, thank you for everyone to join up. All right. Thanks for Sam. You, you, you can hosting and the mark can be, you know, you choose a very good coordinator ways together. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Master Tang. Yes, thanks, Master Tang. So, uh, so at the start, as I mentioned before, uh, I've done a recording with uh, Master Suru. I'd like to play that first. The recording uh, I'll share with you on that, that video. Uh, it'll go for about uh, 11 or 12 minutes, but uh, I think it's really worthwhile. I'm, uh, Hope it's okay with everybody that uh, I'll just, uh, because she's unable to join us today, so I'll share that video with you. Hi, good morning, Sue. Thank you for uh, agreeing to do the uh, chat today. And uh, yeah, so we'll go through, I just want to talk to you about the Qigong practice. And, uh, and it's so important that, uh, that you can join us. And then I think you've done great work with the Qi Generation School and, and with your students participating in the tournament uh, in the past number of years. Fantastic. And uh, so maybe I can um, just throw it to you and ask you the question that, uh, what would you like to talk about Qigong practice and what that means to you and, and what's the benefits and perhaps uh, what might be important what might be fundamental in terms of you feel uh, about Qigong practice? Okay, thank you, Sam. <laughs> I've got a few notes written down here because <laughs> I knew it was going to get into my head and go rare. But anyway, some sort of sense might be made out of this if I read it. <laughs> so, so again, thank you, Sam, for the opportunity to share my thoughts on this panel. The WTQA has been sadly bereft of contact with its members for years now. And this is a lovely way to connect with each other again and share our passion. So. So I've read through all the questions and the one clear thing that comes to mind is that there is too much thinking. <laughs> okay, so my answer to all of these questions is to stop thinking, to stop your mind will, the upper dantian, and listen to your heart mind, the middle dantian, to learn and to know the feminine. We each, male and female, have this feminine energy and we need to acknowledge it, to observe and to listen 
These arts are not a Western practice. They are not a modern practice. They are the profound offerings of thousands of years of observation by the indigenous inhabitants of China, the underpinning of traditional Chinese medical practices and the Chinese culture. To subject these arts to the rigors of scientific research only to label and confine their practice is a great disservice to ourselves and our students. Practicing and teaching with this mindset is not the intent and the promised results will evade us as long as we're in denial of the feminine. So I go on and on and on. Right. And I'll just come That's back. Okay, we've done no right? hurry. <laughs> I've got pages in here, but I'll just I'll just read another couple of paragraphs if that's yeah. all right. <laughs> okay. All right. So most of uh, I've done a lot of reading into, and um, uh, one of the main books that I have read um, over the years and reread is a is a translation by Thomas Cleary in his book called The Immortal Sisters: Secret Teachings of Taoist Women. And this explains how the conservative male ideology began in the Chinese culture, at least, and how it continues to warp the modern view of the Taoist arts. So for at least 22 centuries, a perverted in interpretation of the teachings of Confucius have been used to uplift the male elite um, and maintain their power and suppress the free thinking, the imagination, um, what else? The social change and any inklings of the um, of the spiritual side of humanity. So, in my practice, I pick up on that. Um, in Taoism, the ideas and symbolism of the mysterious female and Mother Earth are regarded as indispensable for all practitioners, regardless of gender. So, the feminine element is strongly emphasised, counting women amongst the strongest of adepts. History and legend point to pivotal moments in ancient times where female shamans and immortals saved the day. Um, yeah, brought balance and compassion and nurture to a failing society. So Mr. Cleary also reminds us that the Yellow Emperor and Lao Tzu, whose texts are, texts are the main source for Taoism, were both our students of female teachers. So I go on further. There's that one. Just a point of interest, just to think where we got to, how we got to this um, level of labelling and having to feel, having to do things in line with a discipline. And discipline, is course, of course, is what you need to keep on practising, but you also need to feel it and you also need to let those, all those questions go and just feel it. Um, I think we're too involved. I think there was a question in there about competition and I've got an answer to that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, right. The intent of Tai Chi and Qigong practice is not to demonstrate a perfect routine for anyone who might be watching. The purpose is to improve your life, balancing and moving energies along your path, creating a beautiful, healthy life inside and out. I can't, in, I can't deny enjoying the challenges of competition and the experiences I've had along the way. But contrary to the common idea of competition, I learned that my perfect routine was neither a comparison to fellow competitors nor to my last routine. Oh, my perfect routine was always and still is a few minutes in time where I sink into my body and move gently, unencumbered by thought, relaxing and feeling the soft flow of energy. It may rise, it will fall, I might feel it, I might not, but I have that moment of balance and of peace, which is what I wish for all of my students. So just to round off that, try for at least a while to feel what you're doing in your practice. Sink your mind into your body, listen to your body, take note of what is happening and respond with respect and kindness and compassion for yourself. How you perform doesn't matter, just feel it, enjoy it. Uh, compassion and kindness for those you teach and for those you share your life with. So that's kind of my thoughts in a nutshell. <laughs> I don't know if you want to go on any further, but um, yeah, no, so good. Uh, you sort of there's a lot in there that uh, that we can uh, talk about, and and I and I found it like I I like uh, Tao Te Ching and Lao Tzu and Zhuang Zi, and 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 there's definitely an emphasis on the feminine, on yeah. on uh, Tao being the the mother. Uh, the feminine side of things, and that might be 
the one aspect of the fundamental principles of uh, of Tai Chi and Qigong practice is to be aware of that, is to, to, to understand the importance of the feminine side yes. of, of that practice. Yeah, absolutely. And in that, yeah. but what I've seen and what I what I've noted in, in how people are responding to each other, um, all of this practice needs to be reflected in your mm. daily life. So, so that's the side of it that um, seems to get lost mm. and people forget that there is a feminine yeah. side. And yeah. so the feminine, so in teaching, there's a lot of forgetfulness in how yeah. to teach. So yeah. we're not, so the detail and all of those labels and you've got to do this by this level and that by the, another level, um, it brings it down to a mechanical practice. Mm. And that's what I feel has happened with Tai Chi and with Qigong over the mm. over the centuries you know it's mm. uh, but mainly over the last i don't know 50 or so years yeah mm. although i i gotta accept that there is a yang side as as the yin side so there is a sort of uh the the, the more disciplined side of things yeah but i still believe that the, the feminine side that the, the there is a masculine side of things and 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 the the, the the two perhaps works together, but the feminine side is probably the more important that should be. Yeah, and that seems. Yeah, that seems to be when I sort of looked through the questions. Yeah. It was all this um, regimented, like <laughs> the masculine scientific logical response to it. It's like ah. <laughs> <laughs> I That's guess the society life. nowadays <laughs> is, is uh, to a large extent, ex extent is run uh, in that sense, though, isn't it? And you, you see that we have more, we do have more male representation in politics, in, in companies, yes. and, and yeah. in every aspect yeah. of it. And, and yeah, the world tends to run more mm -hmm. towards that way. Yeah. yeah, it is funny though. You you do note in classes that it is more predominantly female as yes. students, yes, but and predominantly male as teachers. Yes. So that's that's that reflection of what our society is the dominance and the the under the subjugation. Or it's, it's not even subjugation, I guess, is a strong word, but it is the female acquiesce to whatever the male is oh. is saying. Oh. But oh. so in the male perspective, if they're if they're not aware. Mm. then the feminine is just out the window and so, mm. so it just it's translated by female practitioners and our female teachers mm. they have the the masculine is is inbuilt mm. and it's something that i've sort of oh, i've looked at for years and gone what's going on with this <laughs> why are you so regimented <laughs> and sensitivity is very important isn't it i mean in yeah. tai chi and qigong the sensitive to yourself and to you the opponent it's so important in that practice yeah and female uh, i think in general i can't generalize <laughs> it's more sensitive though isn't it yeah i think so i think so i mean i'm going to generalize <laughs> i have always so there might be some sensitive male around of course there are there's always that uh, in general balance it's always yeah. in there but, yeah. but to, to see the dominant features of, of what's happening with Qigong in Australia, or I don't know, uh, I, I guess it's not just in Australia because you see it through the, like World Tai Chi Day, you get that, mm. that dominant impression of, is the regimentation and the people feel, you know, they're all looking beautiful, they're doing things beautifully, but it's a regimentation that you can't actually tell whether those people are doing their Qigong with that that feminine aspect to it or with yeah. if they've just got their mindset ah oh, the teacher's watching i've got to do this i've got to do this really nicely and i've got to do this nicely i've got to smile behind my eyes and <laughs> all of that yeah they, it's doing for the outside and not for the inside yeah so, yeah. yeah good we can go on for much longer but I know. Uh, you've is got there anything it. else that you you really want to uh, particularly say add to what we've done um, we... oh not really i think I've, i guess we've i've covered it i think yeah, the, yeah. The bits we've been cherry picked and stuff to to make sure that we stay yeah. in those boxes and pigeonholed those sorts of things need to be loosened up and people need to acknowledge the mysterious female mm. the mystery of the whole thing the unknown because there is a lot that's unknown and i think 
if we focus on just finding out those things, we don't relax and float and just enjoy the unknown for what it is. Mm. So, <laughs> okay. There you go. All right, we, will, we might finish off today uh, and I, I'm, I'll stop the recording soon. And, and thank you very much, Sue, for coming oh, on. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for convincing uh, me to come out <laughs> <laughs> and reveal myself. <laughs> yeah. No, it's fantastic. Okay, thank you again. So hope that's all right because uh, Sue couldn't join us uh, uh, or can't join us today. So I uh, just uh, recorded that uh, uh, interview with her and played that at the start. Um, yeah, so uh, I should now then just uh, uh, ask the other masters and uh, maybe uh, to to what what. Uh, uh, the, the same question, what they think about the uh, 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 Qigong practice and what's the benefit of it and whether they like to specifically say something, what's important, what are the important aspects or important principles of, uh, of Qigong. Uh, perhaps I could uh, ask uh, Master Ko, would you like to say something about that? Uh, yep, uh, what's the same, uh, Al? Yep. Uh, personally, I, uh, I, I, my understanding of qi, uh, to me, qi is a concept because it is very much in the Chinese culture. Because uh, even when we were not born in mother's womb, the Chinese called it as tai qi. Tai means the uh, the the. The little, the little, the little one in in the womb. So, started from that time, there's already a chi. So we call it tai chi. And then, with all these, uh, uh, the mother's pregnancy and 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 all fully grown uh, little thing, and then then is then born, and when it come out to the world, then we call the uh, the world that started the the, the baby started to, to do the breathing that is da qi da qi is the universal uh, uh, qi and then started to drink then we call that as sui qi or, or water qi and also started to grow up and eat food then we call it ku qi ku qi is the, the qi of the food so we grow up from before we are born and until we are born and become a human being, we are already associated with qi. So qi in the Chinese culture is very, very deep rooted and is very, very widely used. Whether we, we were young, whether we know it or not, I don't know, but it's all in the culture. And then what is qi gong? To me, qigong is, is the work, the action, the method to cultivate qi for many purposes, for health, for fitness, for balancing your energy, for uh, uh, the well-being of a person. So I regard qigong as a means to achieve an end. And of course, there are many, many benefits uh, that in, 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 again, I would say in Chinese culture, when a person is angry, we say, sun qi, your qi has risen. And if you are very calm, relaxed, and everybody is happy, we say, he qi means that it's hum, harmonious qi. Everybody uh, is friendly to each other. And of course, in that, in that sort of situation, we also say the, uh, the, the, the qi chang or the field where there's qi. So a lot of, a group of people doing qi gong together, then we have that, the field of qi and in Chinese because qi chang. And it's benefiting each other. Like Tai Chi, we also work in a group. And of course, uh, we can also work individual, individually. Then to me, qi gong needs a, uh, basic three elements. One is 
the the movements or the routine, the action, that's element one. Element two is the mind, the thinking. And then of course, you also have the breathing as well. So these three things add together, that's what uh, we perform work and do Qigong. And of course, if I go in, into, uh, I don't want to take so much time by going into a detail because action, movements, routine, you have static action, static movements, static routine uh, as compared to, uh, to the movements. Static, non-movement one is you can do it like standing, sitting, or even lying down. So this is called non-movement. And those movements are like, when we do repeat, repeated movements, like uh, the we Chinese, we say swai so means that the uh, hands moving qigong and repeating the movements. So this one, then the second one, we may have uh, tai chi qigong. Tai chi is soft, gentle. So that's the second method of doing. Or <clears throat> the, uh, the, the one that we do uh, imitating the animals, like, like the five animal movements, the Wu Qing Si, and the, uh, uh, the uh, Egg Golden Treasure, and the Yi Jing Jing, and all these, they are also uh, movements. And of course, there are many others as well. So we should able to be open mind and accept anything that is achieving the health and the fitness and the well-being of, uh, of a person. Thanks, Master so, Paul. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe I can ask Terry uh, to, to comment on it. Terry, of course, uh, uh, Master Terry Lim, we've seen him perform the, the bending the spear. I'm really curious what Qigong means to him in terms of his practice. And obviously, he, he also uh, a bit more focused on the martial arts side of things. Uh, Master Terry Lim, uh, would you like to say something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I definitely 100% um, believe in qi. But um, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong. I think to the Western world or Chinese, uh, the word when you mention qi, general people associate it with just kung fu, tai chi, right? And that's where they stop. And I've I've been in around different form of martial arts. I I am a mixer. I mix with all different form. I don't care whether taekwondo, or karate, or or muay thai or whatever. I always mix with them and then uh, test them out and, and to see if they understand what she is all about. Well, I, to my surprise, a lot of them think when you can hit something really hard. Of course, you can do that when you're young, but when you're old you will find it very hard to get the power behind that. But a lot of people associate it with the muscle. They don't think of the word chi. On, that's how I, I uh, interpret from the reaction of what people um, uh, understand about what chi is. And um, like I said, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, um, to a lot of Westerners, they are not actually educated or make understood what chi means and where it comes from. What, what's it actually doing to your body? Well, I, like I say, I'm 82 and I'm still in the club. I still bounce around and, you know, people still, a lot of people will say, oh, you know, you should slow down, you should slow down. And um, I say, I know where my, what my body can do what chi I've got left in me, right? That's I based on that. And uh, I think to my, like I, I do follow a lot more in the you know, karate side now because we do, you know, all of my students, they're all <laughs> competitors. So we involve in a lot of um, karate side now. And uh, I've been to Okinawa and uh, Osaka, Japan, and I'm a member of the um, World Kumite Organization. And I've talked to a few Japanese about chi. I'm trying to promote what um, 
Qi Kung is all about, or what Qi is all about, to all other martial arts. When you do this, do you realize it's not muscle that helped you? It's your breathing, your, your, your internal Qi that you achieve over the years uh, is helping you. A lot of people think, mm, they look at me, they go, what's he talking about? Um, it, it's pretty sad. Um, I, I just honestly feel um, we don't educate this society. Well, I mean, Australia, we know, you know, we live in. I don't know about other parts of the world. Uh, like I say, I mix around with all different martial arts around Australia. And I feel that they, I think all different other field of martial arts need to be uh, not, not educate, but introduce the meaning of chi. Um, what's actually doing in relation to the arts that you're practicing. Um, every art, whether it's martial arts or, or weightlifters, of course they all rely on chi. And, uh, but they don't understand, they think, oh, it's all, it's all muscle work. Uh, that's why I feel that we, um, in Australia anyway, we should educate all other form of martial arts and um, to let them understand what chi is beneficial to your art. I do that in my club a lot. And um, uh, I don't care how hard you can kick or how hard you can punch. But I said, important part is when you do your punch or your kick, do you actually incorporate your chi with it or, or, or um, harmonize your energy to, to, um, to gain power in your technique. That's why I try to teach in my system, mainly associated a lot of it. Uh, I teach all to my high grade, not, not beginners, because beginners, when you teach them, they start yawning and they think <laughs> you lose them very quickly. So that, oh, in short, I feel that we should educate other, other field of martial art, what chi is not restricted to Kung Fu, Tai Chi, or the Chinese people. It, it's a it, it's associated to human being, uh, like um, Master Ko just said. The minute you <laughs> conceive in your mom's womb, you already develop chi. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that. I think we need some education to uh, to other field. Like today, I I met up some some. I went to a karate tournament. I was talking to a a, um, a karate high rank. I was just talking about that. Oh, I've got to go home. I've got to um, zoom on Chi Kung. He said, what's it all about? So I explained to him, he said, oh, that's interesting. Can you keep me informed? Uh, or, or just, I said, look, we, we might one day form a, um, a little practice day once a week, once a month. I'll get you informed. He said, yes, please do make sure you, you let me know. See, this is just to show you how many of them this guy is a fifth or sixth stand karate is well known. He didn't understand what chi is all about. I don't know whether it makes sense to you or not. And <laughs> that's my comment. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure we all uh, uh, also want to, uh, and definitely not, uh, uh, want to hear from uh, Master Liu Ming on his view on uh, uh, the, the practice of qigong. Uh, Master Liu Diming's uh, recently taught all around the world. So maybe, uh, Master Liu Diming, what's, uh, what's your thought on it? Hello, everyone. <laughs> nice to be here. And uh, yeah, it's a very interesting question. And the question always is a part of our research, myself researching developments. Through those, sometimes I teaching and sometimes I do feel we are hard to describe what the chi is, what the movements and how associate together with our body and uh, this part. But one thing I feel like uh, one of the great men in the quantum, quantum physics scientists, Mark Plant, Plant the, the, the father of the quantum physics, he said, there's, no, and there's not a matter of four. Every matter is only existing in different frequency of energy. Such come out in the, they have a tangible, intangible. So what we see, 
what we look at in our view, in our brain, interpreting is tangible. What we see, we can't see is intangible. So this, therefore, they are all this content of frequency existing in the different frequency, basically of our own interpretation of we look. So which is our great, all of masters say that that she is existing in everything. Every movement, every thought, even of thought can cause. And that's also where recently I'm really into our research of the, uh, into the fascia. And this is very interesting to bring myself into something very interesting, how about how deep we are. And as Taoism said, there's a big universe, our small universe. I was wondering what that concept can give to me. How I can open my mind like a big swan, like a Lao said, to transform the fish into a big one, fly in the, you know, all the way to the North Pole <laughs> to search for you know, something. Deep, the philosophy and our is everything is energy. Yeah? The thought, the concept exists and not existing. So for me, the practice Qigong, I feel like that. every step I'm going forward and I feel like I don't know anything. <laughs> I feel so deep. And then I understand in Lao Tzu said, there's a mystery over us there. Oh, the door, we open the door. So for me, it's like, oh, so fun. Like a little baby, a little, a little boy. I like to play. I want to go look at different things to understand who we are and how we connect in nature which is, uh, for me, understanding through the practice of Qigong, is you gain a great sensation of your body, which is natural development. As a Shu said, we need to practice more. Every thought or question, which is concept, can cause a lot of blockage. And this is my recently, in the philosophy part, I really researched for the reverse thought, reverse concept. So that's very interesting. So it's this part of I just my experience <laughs> practice. <laughs> so we see the plane, we see the plane, we see the plane, we mind interpreting that's a plane, it's this concept. So which block the chi flow. And then we say, okay, I'm the plane, plane look at me. My ego is going up became empty, which is Taoism called Wuji. I became Wu, nothingness. You is what we see. We will change changing the you and the who, which is what is see turned into nothingness, and the what who we are became reflecting what is. So for me, this is practical is find a pathway, the connection. And the connection basically on the another kind of I have the understanding called the quantum entanglement, which is the same the theory basics, if the frequency are the same of the past, or if the two paths are exactly the same, the same frequency, it does matter billion, billion years, the response, there's no distance is existent. And this is a proof. That's something to say, but Taoism, Buddhism, and any other perspective way of ancient arts, indigenous, they already know it. This is what we, how we the earliest day now, because we grow up with just going with nature. We were senses with nature, connection. Then we became much more and more education with them, with the more thinking. The more we start reverse come back ourselves. So which is judgment coming. So exactly what these all things can cause of. So for me, understanding the practical is hugging, understanding matters. And slowly bring ourselves became what who we are and what is connection in that are called the wuji as one. The one is not concept of one, the one is the frequency. Some people may say may say that, oh, I don't feel chi. That's people I say, oh, I say, some people say, yeah, look, I say every individual of self have their own background. We cannot make this as a compulsive of judgment. You make a fear, you can't feel because you sometimes not open, you not look at the tree, you not look at the chi, you not look at what your mind is. So 
you don't know them. You just analyze them. Then when you really look at the detail, and you see, as the Buddha said, a universe as a little gram of the rice, the universe or leaf, universe as a flower petal. But this is what we interpreting, but we're not interpreting in that way. If we just, so that's for me, it's like a finding path, wow, so beautiful. And the connection and I'm happy. So this is my experience with my own practice and I suggest to people cause a journey. Journey is uh, like my father was falling down and I had heard her coxies every time. And then my father complained, I said, look, life is hard. <laughs> we need to go through it. This is our journey, we go through it. We practice Qigong, Tai Chi, martial art. We find the art, we go dancing, we do painting, we do something with our passion and love. And this chi, that's a big chi. Then this journey we go, yeah, and this is so beautiful. That's why the why people go forward as you love and you like it, follow your passion. Thank you. And it makes the journey more fun, I suppose, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> well, there so are well, there are definitely difficult situations people have to face. Mm, mm, uh, mm, mm, the practice mm. uh, can can just make life interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this and is a beautiful a, purpose. There's a connection with nature, but also with other people and other living things, I guess, is mm -hmm. mm -hmm. through that sort of uh, sense of uh, wuji. Yeah, yeah. We are the beings. It's the same. But we exist in different forms. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Master. Leo. I'll pass it on to Mark for the next question. Perhaps. Yes, uh, thanks, thanks, Sam. Um, we've got a question here from um, a, a Mark and a Harry uh, for the panel, and it's um, what aerobic capacity, as far as breath forms, do other styles have in order to cool the intrinsic chi built up felt in the blood and the brain in medical qigong forms? And do you, as teachers, also place an emphasis on this? Uh, the question also says, uh, the person who's asked the question says, in their attempts, th what they try to do is oxygenate the brain before meditation or along with meditation or after in performing dynamic qigong, donggong. Uh, if that question makes any, any sense, maybe Sam, you might want to elaborate a little bit more on that. Uh, we actually have Mark here. Mark Harry is actually here. Maybe Mark, do you want to just elaborate a bit on your question? Hello, Mark. Yes. Okay. Uh, to me, I wanted to put it through uh, because my training in the medical Qigong came after my doing the Dong Gong Qi boxing sort of element. And I found that if I did too much mind body movement, without actually oxygenating, releasing all that sort of stuff with movement, I ended up finding that I was getting rise and yang and uh, overwhelm in the mind where I had to lay down or I was drained. And then I also found that certain movements, if I didn't take that energy and then use it, uh, similar to like if I woke up every morning and I turned on the oven, and then I let the oven heat up for two hours and then I turned it off, but I didn't actually cook anything. I was finding that if I didn't incorporate my medical healing stuff into my chi boxing dynamic, that I was like just like more airy, or uh, my mind wasn't uh, concentrating as well as it did if I had breathing structural, instead of just like breathing uh, with the, the nose, for instance, in all movements, when you do medical forms. I also incorporated in between forms the in and out of nose and, and mouth as well, which helped uh, take all the energy that I was creating. And there was a lot of energy that I was forming from these forms that I do, which I could really feel as uh, intrinsic power deep within. But if I wasn't putting the breath 
back into my movement, my mind wasn't seeming to uh, be able to use it as well. I don't know if that made sense to anyone. Thanks, Matt. Um, would any of the masters like to comment on, on this, uh, on the question? Can I say something? Yes, please. Hi, is a Mark there? Yes. Yeah, Mark, hi, how are you? Thank you, very good. Good, 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 yeah. And this is a general, we say that as our, our body is uh, when to the general exercises, yeah, your heart rate is rising up, we call general adrenals. And um, your pose is high up, and so we know that it takes about 10 to 20 meters, can up to 200, 150, you know, take time to slow down, yeah. So it, this is a really good idea, and I do believe that can be after you don't go and a lot of exercise, can be people charging up so excited. <laughs> so like, okay, what we can do, man? <laughs> so that's not very good, isn't it? Nourishing the in. So that's very important, of course, the mind, the body, how can slow down. In general, we do. We don't even do anything. We settle down, let's your mind, and just the, the heart is smart. When you not do it, the mind relax. <laughs> yeah. So what happens in for tender? What usually I do is sometimes just a little bit of meditation. And meditation, we still focus nothing. Just focus off with my breath. Where's my breath? Where's my heart? And that's it. And then that cell come. So there's no an anticipation, there's no analysis. Just where's my breath? Hmm. Yeah. And that all comes because you have to use the senses rather than mind to look at your breath or control breath which is control the world is already creating your fascia expansion. And then that already yang qi already. So that's why I feel just nice go and then just listen. You press, where's my press? Sometimes you might run away, you didn't know you press. So come back, man. <laughs> Running the horse too far away, come back. <laughs> and the heartbeat, heart. yeah, that's why. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Good answer. Good answer, Master Lou. Thank you. Uh, I, the next question is from uh, Kirsten McCallum. The, the question is, I'd love to hear the masters talk about the relevance of Qigong practice to help energy regulation during the life transition, transition in times of healing uh, trauma, and in particular, the spiritual aspects of Qigong to assist with connectedness and meaningfulness. Any other master want to comment on Kirsten's question, please? Well, okay, I will uh, have some uh, uh, comment there. Eh? I think doing uh, Qigong uh, as uh, the previous uh, questions, Dong Gong and Bu Dong Gong. So for, uh, for a practitioner, if you are too, uh, too either too, too nervous or too uh, uh, result focused, then you might not achieve that. I think uh, they're both the Tung uh, Kong and Putung Kong, they are both good. So my my advice is start with start with non-movements, that is putung kong. Do some meditation. And then, uh, then you we you can combine with your 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 dong gong means you started to have uh, have movements. As I said, uh, example of dong gong, there are of course many, but particularly I I would suggest is the uh, repeat a uh, repeat dong gong. The movements repeat means that repeating the movements. And uh, you, if you actually see, if you uh, in Asian countries, in the parks, you see uh, uh, a group of um, the practitioner that they just move their hands and you might think, oh, you know, the simple movements. But I, 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 I can uh, uh, tell you that it is a very, very 
very effective, very good qigong, as they just call shuai shou gong, means that you loosening, and then they do with with more relaxed and very casual that a group of them doing. So this is the repeating one, and if you want, if you like something soft, gentle, harmonious. Then of course you can practice Tai Chi, or you can you can practice uh, the Qi Gong, like uh, Wao Gu's Qi Gong, or or the Five Animal Movements and A Golden Treasure. All these these are the Dong Gong, and just practice with without like uh, like 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 giving yourself a pressure a pressure that oh I must have. That, that sort of achievement. You see, Qi Sorry, we're losing some audio uh, just now. Master Ko, can you hear me? Okay, maybe we can come back to, to this. Uh, Master Ludi Ming, would you like to comment a bit more, or Master Terry, on the, uh, regarding to the, uh, the practice of Qigong, uh, in the sense of uh, uh, regulating life transitions or times of healing trauma and that sort of thing. Would, would uh, Master Terry or Master Lady Ming want to comment? I can do something, yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, basic on the, you know, when you look at the, as, uh, as we talk, the way into the quantum physics way, we're right back again, the frequency, yeah. Of course, keep on training, if we change the frequency, there's a lot of different way can help your body, you know. I mean, not in a medical way, I'm not suggest, but it helps you balance out your internal frequency. So the sickness is the lowest frequency, that's we all know that. And the positive energy is more tangible, much in, intangible, much more high frequency. So qi gong, qi, frequency is qi, yeah. So uh, for me, I understand the Emotional psychologists or others of spiritual development is really from the use Qigong as a tool as your body gain a great awareness and sensation, which is the fit coming more. The philosophy comes from the nature, isn't it? We forgot, but we use a philosophy to look at nature, forgot of philosophy is just all about existing in nature, so which is a spirit, which is when you practice Qigong, you already gain great spirit in there. Discipline, even like Sue said that oh, every time we're training, we discipline a little bit in this part, also part of spiritual development. Different perspective aspect of spirit, yeah? So, which is in the, when I said, always say that there's a sun coming out of the dampness of it go away. <laughs> we have positive and not recognized participating in beauty energy, not thinking that much. When you're more thinking, the more your frequency low. <laughs> so, so the low part we call in Chinese is called gui feng. Frequency, frequent high frequency is shen. Feng and po is feng is in liver, po is in, like, in your heart, like your lung. So therefore, there's different frequencies. So for me, that's a, yeah, definitely a benefit, but depends on your attitude, yourself, not searching or not to my expectations, which is again, the expectation is already emotion. <laughs> so that's why, so the most important we call ping tang xin, normal, no, no, how can, how can find it? ping tang xin, um, a calm state, or, or, or I guess it's a um, uh, just being in general beings as yeah. beings who you are, who you are, we are, and they're living in the present in time. Mm. And this is why this is part of beautiful development, and the which is Taoism, Buddhism are all we all want to go in that search as well. So. So it is philosophy, physical, spiritual, and other things, effective way of developing. It's comprehensive and beautiful. That's all the arts about, isn't it? <laughs> thank you. Hmm. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Liu. There's actually a follow-up question from the previous discussion. 
that talks about the question was, I'll just read it out. He, uh, the question from Justin is that it's, does this mean that it's in, in relation to yin state versus yang state or intent or breath in medical qigong? So the question is relating to whether something in our discussion is related to yin state or yang state in the practice. I think that's what Justin says. Justin, you want to elaborate a bit more on that comment? I've got a small experience in medical qigong. In as far as my experience, I was I was over, you know, similar to what uh, what Pierre was saying about overthinking creates the blockage. So to go in with the diagnosis in the medical qigong practice, we kind of well, my experience was I was overthinking, which created more of a yang expectation on my form. So I was able, not as able to let go and let the flow happen. Um, I'm trying to avoid cliches, but it just, it was creating more internal demons than peace in my form. And as soon as I was able to sort of take it, depending on the diagnosis, you know, whether I needed to nourish or, or expel, going back to a, a yin state seemed to allow the pathways to open. Um, Thus, it became an umbrella of Qigong more so than medical Qigong. I'm not sure if I've confused myself or everyone else. <laughs> but that was, that was kind of my findings. And I don't know if that relates to Mark's question. And I, I'm only spitballing, I think, um, as part of my own discovery through this. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, is there a particular, I'm not sure whether uh, Master Liu already answered, answered the question to some extent, so yeah. I, I, look, as far as what I'm getting on, I think what Master Liu sort of uh, echoed the thoughts about, yeah. maybe it's less is more. Yeah. Just keep cruising. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, look, that's, uh, yeah, I do, yeah, Mark, yeah, of course, yeah. It's a very interesting question as well because uh, there's uh, so many things that we need to focus on, which is a concept mm -hmm. again. So when we go, that's how confused people are. We from the simple became complicated, and the complicated became mucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when we go in the supermarket, we just try to find toothpaste, and then there's 20, 30, or 40 toothpaste there. <laughs> you think it's which one I do it? <laughs> Which one you buy, but this is sort of the bright teeth. <laughs> Me yeah. the same is bright teeth, but we all go for, for going some so simple. Okay? So what is the don't hold in too much concept? Mm -hmm. And this a lot of being coming. And then when you very interesting, the when you, we call let go, let go, so hard let go. Yeah. And this is a way of practice. So we all going through that journey, yeah. Mm. So it's okay. It's beautiful. It's, which is every every maybe you know, falling or falling hit a wall. Or there, there's big storm. Big, you know, it's us coming, but that's all we are coming here for. <laughs> Experience. <laughs> the journey goes forward. Otherwise, you not know, ask this question, yeah. and we are not connected. <laughs> and this is beautiful. We bring we connection. Yeah. Is that that's a, okay? that's a saying in Tao Te Ching that uh, practicing Tao is about letting go of things, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it's, 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 that is the one long, long term to practice and so beautiful as well. <laughs> I've been yeah. done, but <laughs> that's a human. <laughs> too many, too many things, huh? too mm -hmm. many material things and too many concepts, as you say, must go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We have a query here from a Lucy Keenan. I don't think she's she's on the forum. I can't see her. Yeah, on the she's list. saying unfortunately she can't can't join us today. Uh, okay, but her query is um, best breath work for Tai Chi and Qigong for beginners, intermediate, and advanced practitioners. She says for her participants, once they're familiar with Qigong and or Tai Chi routines, she gets them to focus on one principle. 
So for example, if breathing is one of the principles and focus, she says, query one, best breath work for Tai Chi and Qigong for beginners, intermediate and advanced practitioners. And her query two is, should the tip of, should the, tip of the tongue touch the roof of the mouth behind the front teeth on an in-breath and the tip of the tongue touch the base of the mouth behind the bottom teeth on the out breath. And she has a third part of this question that says, is purpose of Qi Gung being done before Tai Chi so that the body, mind, the body and the mind can be calm and centered and to prepare for the Tai Chi lesson? I know there's a few questions in there. So um, if we can hand it over, maybe do your best to maybe answer some of Okay, I'll say something. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I think, oh, yeah. I think uh, <clears throat> practice uh, like this, that you do have the beginners, intermediate, and advanced. The first thing I think to practice Qigong or Tai Chi as what uh, uh, Master Liu has said, Ping Chang Xing. What is Ping Chang Xing? Ping Chang Xing means that you totally relax. You totally like yourself. Don't worry about, don't put too much things in your head that I must achieve this, I must achieve that. Because as I was going to say that practicing Qigong or Tai Chi is like cooking, like you are cooking a fish or you are boiling a fish. It has got to be a slow fire and take long time. Nothing can happen straight away next week, next month, next year. I've been practicing martial arts, Tai Chi, Qi Gong for 50 years and I'm still learning. I'm, I still do not know anything. And what I advise, I like to, to, to like put in some of my uh, uh, experiences that to start with, just take it easy. You can start from uh, doing just a very static, non-movement and try to relax, try to, 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 to do some meditation or meditative static movements is what, again, I quote, quoted uh, Master Liu said, we've got too many intruding things in your mind. If you are able to slowly discard them and just take it easy, practice your static qigong, that is putong gong, and then later on, go on to tong gong. In fact, tai chi or qigong, there is no, to me personally, no uh, 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 format or, or no fast rule that you must do Qigong first before you do Tai Chi. And Tai Chi, uh, Qigong is to prepare you to do Tai Chi. To me personally, I don't think that way because Qigong can be the whole set of things that you do. You can do uh, the static Qigong, you can do the repetitive Qigong, you can do the moving meditation Qigong. And there are many of them that you can use. So my, again, I would say that just take it easy, boiling water, cooking food, cooking, uh, uh, you are cooking a fish or you're frying a fish, you don't want to put a big fire, big, uh, uh, cooking and then you have the head is not cooked but the tail is burnt in 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 Chinese again I want to quote we say jiao. I think Master Liu and, and Terry yeah. will understand what I say or Master Sam thank you okay, good answer very good answer thank you yeah I think uh, may I comment on that too absolutely uh, to, uh, to add on to uh, Master Ko's uh, perfectly right just like learning any art, you've got to teach a student the very important basics first. Uh, say like Mazako said, well, you can practice Qigong, uh, important thing, teach them yeah, your, your tip of the tongue, where to place it, and then with the in exhale, where the tip of the tongue goes. And uh, the meaning of all that, what he explained to them, why, why do we do that? Um, explain to them, if they get all the concept of all that, and also not just breathing and the posture too. 
right? When you do a chair pose, your posture is wrong. It's going to, um, it's not going to flow as well as uh, it's supposed to be. So it's not just breathing, the posture and then the flexibility, relax mode, all that. If, if you can achieve all that with your student, then you can proceed on to the next level, whatever it is. Or in the, in 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 a case, it's uh well going to Tai Chi. Well, but if if they work all all the principle right, like building a house, you got your foundation right, everything is going smoothly. So uh, you can't rush. Say uh, do this and then go to the next stage, the more advanced level. If we don't understand the basic one first. It's not going to be a success in the, in the long run. That's all I want to comment. I think basics is most important. And why, why they're doing it, why they have the tuck, tip of the tongue there. And on exhale with, with the tip of the tongue going to the bottom and the posture and all that. If they can work on all this properly, I think they will uh, they'll learn a lot quicker in the, in the next thing. In, in the, in that case, the Tai Chi is going to be a lot easier. Yeah, that's what I want to comment. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Master. Thank you. Thank you, Master. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Master Liu, you want to comment anything? I just want uh, just a little bit. I really beautiful. The beautiful, the most bar master said the throw is Chinese called Yi Shu Bu Da. Everything you're building up the garden, you need a form. Not reg little regulating first, and so then make a building beauty garden became a, just became a garden, <laughs> just became a garden rather than individual called tree or something. So take time slowly, slow cooking is a much more test. Another word I want to say is the water can carry the boat, can also destroy the boat. What that mean I want to say that is the tongue of top of the roof. From my understanding of teaching, I find so many people, practitioners, especially in the France, they so much want to concentrate on what they want to achieve, particularly with the breath and attention, such that jaw way tight. When the jaw way tight, which is your cerebellum, fascia way tight, or you pull it. We know it every time we're thinking, we know we jaw tight. So that's all the chicken do. Uh, jaw, the tongue, tongue, you know, must have, yeah, to do these things because we the move. The para inside the mouth is so big, so important. They contain so much. Our throat connecting heaven and earth chi, we go 10 to acupressure point. Tongue is so important in. When Chinese connecting your heart. Chi. So when you nightmare, your tongue will thick, red, which is you can't sleep, your heart sun pudding. Your sun not settle, you may you you your dream, you you everywhere, you you your phone in the liver running everywhere. <laughs> so that is very important. But how the tongue about it? So you all the time you touch the pool, all the time, all the time. You create tension so much. And it became slow, became dry. The reason is that we call the central tendon. Chinese is called room mind. From the lower abdomen, there was a before we burst, we have about eight months, or not eight weeks, something we have the fascia on lower abdomen. We, we spiral co co into our stomach and that fascia automatic bounce, in which Chinese is called Tai Chi. You know, the, the in, 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 in embryo breath. This is what tongue connecting together, all together, in the sexual organ, into your big toes, into the feet, and then home back, a big fashion come out of the circle, which is, we call the microcosm of orbit, do my and remind, remind. Tongue all that pushing can be called tension. I call the, that's called the water can destroy the boat. But tongue, as a greater practice, they can make your power become more space, throw more open because it keeps stretching the tender. That's why we inhale, tongue slowly up. For me, understanding is tongue more little bit like a one inhale. 
the gentle little bit, ah, oh, like a boat flow up, and the back parallel start walking. And then, ah, oh, let go. So we start internal breath, which is planet gland. Start, we try to activate in the planet gland. So the training time is so important. And of course, I can, but not for beginning to be important. So that is where the, where the time part on the rooftop, why we do that, all relaxed down. You, you all seem to tend to relax it. And then you, ah, they're connecting your heart and the lung when that friend coming down. So that, ah, so you feel relaxed. And people will be nervous, holding your hand in your tongue in the one breath and relax. And then you over the back, your tangible become fading out, intangible energy coming, which is chi arising. Yeah. So that's my advice. Yeah. So thanks, Master Liu. Yeah. Just there's actually a, there's, yeah, yeah. Master Liu, uh, there's actually a question specifically specifically for you. The question was <laughs> when will you teach in Australia? Uh, will you teach in Australia again and when will that be? A kind of I kind of uh, in my own develop. That's why before I said slowly, I learning more, more, more. I want to be selfish, so I'm not teaching too much these days. But I will come out. I kind of now. I, I feel how how as a, a custom ask about the question. I feel very interesting as well because I involved with the teaching thirty nine years from martial art into university, in the university, and then. In the in the world, so the what I teach all the time, my man, my mind, conscious is thinking about how can I give, it? and I forgot who I am at the same time. I busy giving, 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 and suddenly not balance. My internal not sacrifice my own living and existence, mm. and then start I say, what that, and then I start more confuse my brain. Sometimes. For, you know, that's thought to fighting. <laughs> so I said, maybe I need to give up a little bit teaching. Mm. Let this all of the, you know, stone <laughs> settle down a little bit and see yeah. what is inside the stone. <laughs> yeah. So but that's why not teaching. So we much. just have to thank not you teaching. more for uh, agreeing to come to this chat uh, discussion. Uh, even I'm though well you are. Happy. Sort of, uh, you you, you uh, sort of have in a hiatus uh, uh, with your teaching, and okay. then uh, yeah, thank you so much that you're coming, you're able to agree to to talk to us. Thank you. So <laughs> sorry because I will back to teaching again. Yeah, I'm very yeah, happy. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> a bit selfish. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Uh, the the next question actually is from Josephine Ho. Josephine is here as well uh, in the Zoom session. The question is that uh, Josephine is asking whether there are too much emphasis in the traditional Chinese medicine and fitness effort on fierce competition and winning rather than on uh, personal and interpersonal mutual and cooperative growth and development. Would uh, any of the masters like to comment on that? Josephine, you'd like to elaborate a little bit more? Uh, just, can I just say that I think it's very interesting what Master Deming was just saying about his need to look inward a little bit rather than giving out all the time. Because I feel like, um, is that not what we were talking about earlier about finding the feminine? And maybe with all due respect, Buster Denning, you're looking for more of the yin in yourself, the receptive, rather than the, the yang, which is more externalizing. And I kind of feel like this competition um, can sometimes result in that, in that very phenomena. And I, I feel like for me, my quest is to try and find the space in between the two, you know, where they actually complement each other, both within myself and in the group. I really like the way you talked about um, the, the balance within the group as well. And so I feel like sometimes too much emphasis on being better than or worse than gets in our way of doing that. I hope that makes some sense. <laughs> yeah. Mm. This is a very interesting question, isn't it? 
always uh, how we can face of different the challenge, different the perspective, the way the viewing of the different the things and matter. I uh, very interesting one day I was in the uh, in the China mountain. I saw there's a little water stream, some beautiful plant there. There's dry land there. They're growing something. There's rock still growing out something. And this is so interesting for me, which is the survival mechanism, the way who, what they want, the participating, want to bring the self out. This is what we beautiful our way of feeling of the democratic way of our own feeling. People like going through the competition, maybe they feel like, I like going through this in a way I can understand, that's why I need to discipline myself a little bit in their need. Also from the way of some people, no, I don't want that. I'm very happy with who I am. I want to go through much deeper in the way of research. So there's a lot of road, pathway, teacher there. And which is beautiful, like the old existing in different opinion can exist. It's this the same, same, same pace, like uh, we're painting, <laughs> put a lot of colors in messing up. <laughs> and come out of the people, oh, that picture. You know, say, oh, that's color. <laughs> and that's how beautiful we are existing in this beautiful thing. So that's why I feel that how beautiful we can bring opinions, everyone opinion, everyone of where of they want to do, but we okay have different. But of course, emphasis to pushing is the, uh, there's the coach, there's their many background about the thought, yeah? So uh, that's why, yeah, we are so happy to, what can say that? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Master Bill. Uh, I suppose the time is getting close. Maybe just one last one, which is from Lynette uh, 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 Rachel. Uh, the last question is, uh, should the teaching of Qigong be regulated? And if so, how do the panelists see the regulation being enforced? We have to make it a fairly, uh, maybe just a quick answer to that and we'll be uh, finishing on that. Would the master like to just comment on whether Qigong uh, teaching should be regulated and how would that work? Well, I personally think uh, it, it shouldn't be regulated. It should be uh, for individual that if you think that it's beneficial to you, by all means do that because it is something that you will know that it has benefited you and you have done that and you feel fine after doing that, uh, if we regulate, then we sort of having some fixed uh, uh, routines that you must practice this, you must pr practice that. Uh, then of course, then this will point out again to the competition. Again, once you've regulated, then the competition will come in. So, uh, so personally, I think it shouldn't be regulated. Thank you. Thank you, Master Cole. Uh, Master Terry and Master Liu, any comment on that? Yeah, I, I fully agree. Just like everything, if you want to do a thing uh, properly and with proper structure, um, Qi Kong is no different to running a karate school, running a Kung Fu school. I think it should be treated like a, um, well, with more professional approach, in other words. Um, that way too, you could sort of avoid <laughs> all the um, wrong concept about what Qi Kung is all about. You know, I think, yeah, I fully support the idea of um, it should be regulated. And of course, it's, it's not a, a short-term thing. You got to look into it carefully, how it's going to affect uh, all other, you know, everybody else and uh, every other school. Uh, yeah, I, I fully, uh, of course, there should be more discussion about this before we jump into it. Um, yeah, definitely, I think it should be regulated and um, properly thought out process. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Definitely, it's, there can be difference of opinion. There's no problem. And, and certainly, if we're regulated, then it needs to be thought out very carefully. Thanks, Terry. Mm, yeah. Thank you very much. Master Liu, you want to? 
comment on that? Uh, yeah, look, I really agree with all we call the by fa qi huang. You know, all the flower can, can, can all beautiful open, which is the treasure. You know, that's important of Qigong really exists in, 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 in a local, beautiful master living in the society. Yeah? Every style, every master contributing beautiful arts into it. And then that's why I talk big talk with Huan Ninghai, the, the, the head of uh, head of Cal uh, Qigong Association. We had a big discussion about it. I said, that's not very nice always regulate any list, only two. How about really others? That's all of history and this is all of culture. <laughs> Why do that? But again, it's for the polit politician way, yeah? So I know, I think that by Hua Qi Huan is so important to have all any existence can be alive, bruised and became blooming. That's important. Regulation for me, I feel is, we can as, part, as an organization organize a little more workshop, yeah, and then more like this beautiful discussion and bring this. This is all the recreation. <laughs> beautiful recreation. <laughs> That's what I feel. When the water when the water is formed, the string of the water coming string will be formed. That's all about the nature Taoist. Yeah, that's my opinion. Yeah. Thank you very much, Master. Bafa Chi Huang means uh, Hundred flowers all blooming together like in yeah. the springtime, and it's beautiful. All different <laughs> colors, all different type of flowers, and uh, yeah, that's what Master Liu is saying. That uh, different styles, different type of chikung can all bloom, you know, uh, develop. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, this is a good ending to our discussion. Thank you for, thank you for to everybody. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, Mark, you want to say something? Um, yes, I just want to quickly thank all of the masters for their insight here. It has just been a phenomenal discussion uh, just to hear from such well-trained minds in this, in this field. Um, I know personally I got a lot out of it myself. I'm sure everybody else who's, in, who, who's been listening um, has gained something out of it. So we cannot thank you enough and we do appreciate the time that you've given to us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you to everybody for joining this session and uh, we'll look into uh, uh, workshops or, or, or seminars or, or follow up more events later on. And uh, yeah, good to see you all today. And as Mark is saying, thank you very much to particular to the masters for sharing the, uh, the views with us. And uh, yeah, so have a, have a good uh, weekend and uh, have a fantastic week next week. And, from then on, uh, all the best, yeah. everybody. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everybody. Yeah, also, um, thank you. can I um, thank you. Thank, um, thank you. Uh, Sam again? Sam, yes, thank, thank you very much for organizing this. Yeah. Thank you, Terry. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Okay. Love you. See you. And all the other organizations just start active. And we're yeah. happy. Yeah. We're happy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, have a good day, everybody. Okay, bye now. Bye. 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 Bye.